Wrapping up Big South Football Media Day here in Charlotte. Alan York, Nick Pierce alongside on the Liberty Flame Sports Network. Nick, big day, big couple of days really here for the Big South and it started on Monday. What did you take out of the last couple of days? Well, it's always fun to see coaches and players outside of their normal element where we see them in practice and in pads and, and grunting and sweating. And, you know, to kind of see them a little bit more loose here and kind of see some personalities shine through. Uh, tell you what, I think there's going to be a lot of competition in the league this year. Charleston Southern obviously picked to win it. The yep. Flames were picked second. Uh, you know, I think top to bottom, you know, it's, it's going to be some exciting football coming up here this fall. Liberty represented at Media Day by linebacker Dexter Robbins, quarterback Stefan Masha, uh, two veterans of this team, and I think they acquitted themselves quite well the last couple of days. Yeah, they've handled themselves well. We found out about the Tennessee Ninja, Dexter Robbins. Uh, <laughs> it's always, those are the kinds of things right. that you find out at Media Day. And you said Stefan likes to cook. I didn't, Chicken Alfredo. Did not realize that. Right. So, you know, nice little tidbits, and uh, you, you learn more about the guy behind the face mask and inside the helmet. Now, Nick, you had a chance to talk to all the coaches, a lot of student athletes, and even mm -hmm. Commissioner Kyle Kalander. How did those conversations go and what did you gather about the excitement they have for not only this season but the Big South in general? Well I think everyone's got a lot of optimism at this point in the season certainly everyone's zero and zero so there's a lot of optimism to be had. It was interesting spending some time with uh, Jamie Chadwell the head coach of Charleston Southern certainly they went to new heights last year going to the FCS quarterfinals and you know the thing that he pointed out was how they are now the the hunter the hunted and not the hunter anymore so It'll be interesting to see how that team comes out still with a chip on its shoulder, uh, believing that it can be even better than it was a year ago. Uh, certainly, you know, they'll have to see how uh, Copeland handles things at quarterback uh, with, you know, having not had all of the reps last year, but he still had some playing time. Feels really good about his defensive side of the ball as well uh, for Charleston Southern. But, uh, you know, talking to some of the other coaches, uh, Kennesaw State certainly picked third in its second year of existence. That uh, that's, uh, shows some expectations yeah. there on their program. They feel really good about uh, Trey White, their quarterback, and the fact that he's not going to have to run the ball as much. They have a little more depth on the offensive side of the ball now. And, you know, some others as well that I think will be in the mix. You know, Gardner-Webb, uh, Presbyterian even picked sixth. You know, they were in every game that they, they played won. last year in the, in the Big South. They had the lead midway through the fourth quarter in every game. Mm -hmm. So even, you know, down to the, the bottom of the pole, I guess, you know, there's still optimism for all of these teams coming into this year. You brought up a good point on our ride down here. Looking at Liberty's schedule in the league last year, Fall at Gardner Webb, fall at Monmouth. Those two come to Lynchburg, and the defending champion, Charleston right. Southern, has to come to Lynchburg. Right. So, favorable schedule for the Flames in 2016 when it comes to the league, and it's going to be a daunting month of September, yes, it will. but that's uh, to be expected on these teams, and I know the Flames are up for the challenge. Yeah, they, they are, and I think uh, you hit on a good point there as far as, you know, some of your toughest games are going to be in, on your home turf, right. and that's where you want to be playing them. But uh, we'll see, like you said, I think the, the key is how the Flames make it through that non-conference schedule, because it's a tough one. You open in Blacksburg against Virginia Tech, you know, that's going to be a raucous atmosphere. Justin Fuente's first game as head coach of the Hokies. They've got a new quarterback as well, though. True. So they're going to be answering some questions, you know, trying to get their footing a little bit after the first quarter and a half, two quarters. Can the Flames kind of be competitive early on and keep themselves in that ball game, give themselves a chance in the second half to, to pull off an upset, which we've seen happen in Blacksburg. James Madison did it just a few years ago. So not out of the realm of possibility there. Then you've got Jacksonville coming to town the next week. Uh, very SMU tough SMU on team on the road, right? Jacksonville State, FCS runner-up a year ago. So I think how the Flames come through those first five games or so, health-wise, and then also just mentally as they get into conference play. I think the first month, month and a half of the season is going to tell us a lot. Nick, ready for the season. Appreciate your time and can't wait for August to get here. And first game there in Blacksburg, September 3rd. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Don't forget, fans, we've got some other coverage of Media Day here. We went Facebook Live with our student-athletes and head coach Turner Gill. Those are archived at the Liberty Flames Facebook page. And also coming up this week, individual interviews here on the website with Dexter Robbins. Stefan Masha, head coach Turner Gill, and Big South Commissioner Kyle Kalander. For Nick Pierce, I'm Alan York for the Liberty Flames Sports Network.